Hi and welcome. I see we have our attendees joining us. Uh, thank you for joining this evening. I'm going to ask for those of you already online to please make use of your chat function just to pop us a message and let us know who you are and where you are from. This will allow us to um, allow the rest of the attendees to get on. So if you just want to pop us a message using your chat function, just let us know who you are and where you're from. I see we have Amira, welcome. So if you just wanna just pop a message on there, Dudu from UFS. Sanisa from Port Elizabeth, Robin from South Africa, Mohammed from Cape Town, is it Hideon from Stellenbosch? We have quite a few coming in now, Terusha from Vitz, Letitia from Johannesburg. Hi everyone and thank you for joining. We are just going to allow another moment or two for the rest of the participants to get on. Lesejo from Witt, Daniela from Stellenbosch, Rotando from Stellenbosch, Xavier from Cape Town, Robin from Rhodes, welcome everyone. I'm going to allow another moment to pass and we will then introduce our speakers and begin the session. Mike from Stanton, welcome. Violet, hello everybody and thank you for joining. Okay, so I think we are about ready to begin. So I would like to introduce both our speakers today. Uh, we have Natasha Kitchen and JC Rodemeyer from the University of Stellenbosch, who is willing to assist with this webinar today. So I will just read a short bio to introduce our speakers before handing over. So Natasha is the laboratory manager for the neuropsych Psychiatric Genetics Research Group, Department of Psychiatry, Stellenbosch University. Natasha is also doing a PhD in psychiatry, investigating the role that the maternal and inf infant gut microbiome and the maternal vaginal microbiome play in fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. In order to support her research, Natasha received the NRF to Tuka Research Grant and Harry Crossley Foundation Research Grant. Natasha is financially supported by the SAMRC Bongani Mayosi National Health Scholar Program, Ernst and Ethel Erickson Trust, and Prof. H.W. Truta Postgraduate Bursary Fund. Natasha has been actively involved with Golden Key since 2012. With her knowledge gained from her terms as Vice President, President, and graduate advisor. Natasha now serves as an advisor for Golden Key Stellenbosch chapter and serves the Golden Key International Council of Advisors as the Southern African representative. Natasha was awarded a Golden Key Advisor Professional Development Grant in both 2018 and 2019. JC Rodemeyer is a blended professional at Stellenbosch University who is passionate about teaching and learning and to ensure transformative student experiences, especially in education. He is currently an assistant resident head and coordinates several programs in student com communities. His leadership and mentorship qualities make him a creative educational leader and thinker, but also a compassionate teacher. These characteristics better enable him to support people in different ways, including creating a more welcoming environment, encouraging healthy social and working interaction, providing collaborative real life learning opportunities and facilitating engagement in meaningful educational activities and programs. JC already received two awards from the Rector, namely the Rector's Award for Exceptional Leadership in 2014, as well as the First Year Achievement Award in 2020 as a lecturer who contributed to the most first year students' academic success. Before I hand over to these two phenomenal speakers, I just would like to mention a bit of house rules. So firstly, you are required as an icebreaker by the two presenters to have your phone at hand. So if you are not using your phone to, to watch the webinar, please keep your phone close by. Also, now that we've done the introductions, please no longer use the chat function unless the presenters require that. If you have a question, please make use of the Q&A function at the bottom. 
So I'm going to hand over to the presenters now. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a good time. Hi, everyone. So, as Natasha mentioned, my name is JC Rodemeyer and I'm from Stellenbosch University. And before we start with today's presentation, we are going to do a quick warm up exercise. I'm not referring to jogging around the block. Um, you only need your cell phone at hand. Um, to, so make sure you have your cell phone with you. So if you can go to www.menti.com and use the unique code on the screen to log in, that, that will be really helpful. So if you've done that, please just raise your hand so that we can see that you are on the same page. So while we're waiting for everyone to join us, I'm just going to stop to share the screen and I'm going to go to the meeting meter screen for us. And where is it now? So sorry for this. So while we wait, everybody, it's Dr. Al McCaslman speaking, the Golden Key Director. Uh, what I love about these kind of glitches is to show how agile we are in Golden Key. And this is exactly how our members will deal with challenges in the real world. So thank you, Natasha and JC, for not starting to panic and just manage it in your stride. Enjoy. So now we can see on the screen that we have already 17, 2019 students joining for this um, warmer. If you're struggling, please just inform us. I love the icons, they're so cool. Tracy, can you just repeat the code? So the code is 482150. 482150. And we still have more people joining in. So just to give you some, I'm just to clarify what we're going to do. This is going to be a multiple choice warmer. However, it's a competition. So you need to answer the question in a very fast way. 
and the correct way to score the highest mark. At the end of the quiz, we're going to see who's the winner. But the most important part is that at the end of this presentation, we're going to have another Mentimeter quiz, and the winner of that quiz is actually going to receive a voucher. Natasha, can you maybe tell us more about the voucher? Is Natasha there? Okay, she's not there. So I'm going to tell you more about the voucher. So at the end of the session, there's going to be a quiz based on the information we're going to share in this webinar. And the winner will receive a Take A Lot voucher and we will send that to you. Okay. So we're going to start this quiz. I think the majority of, the, um, of you joined in. Um, are you ready? Someone still trying to access it? Everyone ready? Okay, here we go. So please remember it's the fastest fingers first. And the first question is, true or false? So 79% of you got this question right. Um, if you're not part of Golden Key, please make sure that you're going to join our society um, or you just accidentally made a mistake. So well done. So here is the, the leadership board. I don't know who is Hop Hop Hop, but apparently Hop 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 is in the lead. So we're going to go to the next question. Next question, are you ready? We. Oui. So Golden Key has three pillars, academics, leadership, and service. So the one that's not one of the pillars is communication. Um, and the majority of you got that question wrong. So there's some learning that needs to take place as well about Golden Key. So that's why we decided to include more Golden Key questions in the warmer. But before we get there, let's see who's in the lead. So we have another person that's in the lead, um, Caitlin Snyman. Congratulations. Let's see if you can keep up the good work. So well done, Caitlin. Next, well done, Caitlin. Next question. <laughs> this is a tricky one. <laughs> Let's see. So the correct answer is 2,000. Wow. I am really impressed that you scored more on this question than the previous one. So Golden <laughs> Key kept to South Africa 2,000. And let's see who is leading on the leadership board. So we have new person in the lead michael i don't know where's michael from um please maybe give us an indication in the chat function um let's see if you're going to get the next question right how many chapters are there in southern africa this is also a tricky one Remember, not in South Africa, in Southern Africa. Shoot. Um, the correct answer is 16. We have 16 chapters in Southern Africa. 
remember we are an international society, not only in South Africa. So you're also part of the bigger picture. But the most important part now is who is in the lead. Yanela. <laughs> well, Good job. Yeah. Okay. So Yanela won this cooler. Um, she was the fastest finger as well as the person with the most points. Um, congratulations. However, the next question we would like to determine um, in a word cloud, why do you think professional email etiquette is important? So in, on your Mentimeter, you can fill in free words. So please, if you think about why it's important, just type in your whys and we will be able to see your response on the screen. So this is very interesting. Um, communication, respect, professionalism is standing out the most. So the majority of you indicated that that is the main reason why professional email etiquette is important. Um, and then you can also see the smaller words like it's clear or clear communication, effectiveness, your reputation, that's important. Your reputation is on the line. You are creating an image for yourself. Um, yo, this is actually a very good word cloud. Yeah, I love it. There's, I'm pretty sure I saw ethical, which is good. Polite. Natasha, if you can decide on three words to describe the reason why email etiquette is important. What is, what is your three words? Well, definitely professional comes right at the top. Um, but also showing who you are to whoever you're emailing, be it a colleague or someone higher up. And then also um, being effective and in your communication with that person. So communication, effective communication. And yours, JC? Well, I truly believe that an email you send to a recipient is actually the first um, image that you are creating. It's, it's the same as your CV. So your, 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 your reputation is definitely on the line. Um, and the individual or the recipient will have one look at your CV and is going to determine are you professional or not. And that's also why it's important to make sure that you are um, applying all the rules in an email. So definitely your reputation, professionalism and um, the first impression. That's why you need to make the right impression. Okay. I love this. This is great. So this is very interesting. I will ask the Golden Key Directors to actually share this image on our social media pages to inform everyone why we think professional email etiquette is important um, and also to share our wisdom with, with others. So great. This was actually perfect. So now we're going to stop this Mentimeter and we're going to start with our Presentation. Natasha, are you ready for this? Of course. <laughs> okay, perfect. Just give me a second. Okay, so as mentioned before, we're going to present on professional and effective email communication because it's important to make a good or the right impression to the person that you're emailing. So we're going to give you some tips or share some of our tips um, with you in this session. Um, but Natasha, 
Why do you think it's important? Well, as I mentioned, it's the way that you're putting yourself forward to the person that you're emailing. It's the way that you communicate with them, but not face to face or voice to voice. So it has to be clear enough as if you were in the same room. Definitely. I My only problem is I'm not always 100% sure how to achieve this. Well, if you're referring to the how, you're in the right space or place. We're blended, blended um, learning in, in, um, now. So in this session, we're going to actually going to inform everyone how to write a professional email. And it's, there's certain steps that you need to follow to be able to achieve this. And we will be spending more time on the latter. Natasha, are you ready again? Yeah, so all good. Where do you start? Where do you start on writing a professional email? Well, I guess it's really important to have a subject line. You, you should always, always write one and not use the subject line to write your entire email. It is important to be not only specific, but concise. It doesn't help writing a whole long essay. It's Research shows no more than nine words or 60 characters. And then when you're looking through your email inbox for that one email, it's helpful to add unique identifiers to find latest in the searches. And it also helps to eliminate filler words. There's no need to add and, and all of those things. They just add to the subject line unnecessarily. So it might also, be helpful to show. Excuse me? It might be helpful to show some e examples. Yes, I think that is important. So here's an example of a subject line. What do you think about this example? Well, if I were a Golden Key International Honor Society, I assume that I receive hundreds of these emails. This subject line, although short, does not give much information. Who is emailing and what are they emailing about? So how, how would you um, improve this subject line? Well, I think adding those unique identifiers will help. Add your name, potentially what you are emailing about, and maybe your acceptance code if, that, if you're emailing specifically about joining Golden Key. So I think we should show them an example of how it will look. So this is an example of a subject line with all the necessary information. So you can see that, well, this, is, um, th this email is from Natasha and she indicated her name and the surname as well as her unique identifier. So Natasha, what is the unique identifier in your subject line? Well, my surname is pretty unique, so I feel like that's a unique identifier. But in most people's cases, the acceptance code is unique to me as a person and therefore a unique identifier. And Lebo, Lebo in the chat had a good, a good thing to mention. She said um, if she has to use and in a subject line, she tries to use the sign, the symbol, rather than the words and. Yes. Which is a good one. Definitely. Um, and Natasha, if you're a student at university and you're sending an email to a department, for example, the bursary office, which unique identifier can you use in your subject? Well, universities make that really easy. Most universities ha give you a student number. So I would always put my student number first, followed by the actual subject of the email. Yes, definitely. So there you have it. The first step of um, email is to include a well or a good subject line. So the next, next? Part, the next part is the greetings. It's always good to address the recipient. However, this part can be tricky. Natasha, why do you think it can be a tricky situation? Well, what if I don't know the person's gender? Um, do, do I mention Mr, Mrs, 
how how do I do that? Yeah, and that's that's really important because you don't want to address a a female as a as a male or a male as a female or you don't want to mention all the title of the individual mister if it's a professor so it, it can be become really complicated so how, how are we going to solve this and Natasha's just not there at the moment so i'm going to solve this in the, for myself in the current situation oh, Natasha, you're breaking up. Natasha's not there at the moment, so I'm going to provide you with some answers. So if you do not know who is the recipient, you can do a Google search. Um, we live in the fourth revolution where we have internet to, um, to use. So try and figure out if it's a male or a female so that you can include Mrs. or Mr. Um, as well as the title of the individual. If you do not know if it's a male or a female, you can use MX. So MX refers to it's gender neutral and also um, you are being very inclusive in that process. Recently, there was a situation where a company addressed the, the employers as high guys, or it was actually a, 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 a festival, and one of the sponsorships withdrawn from the sponsorship list because of that small error. So that is quite important. It's also important to take note about your writing style. You need to determine is it a formal or an informal email and who are you sending the emails to the email to is it your colleague is it your friend is it your lecturer because that will determine how you're going to address that individual natasha welcome back um thanks Sorry about that. i asked i asked a question and then i answer it myself it's a bit awkward without you so um i provided an answer as well um but can you maybe maybe give some examples of when do you use a formal writing style? Well, if you email in your lecturer or someone more senior, it's important to be respectful and use things like dear, make sure you use doctor or professor or even Mr. or Mrs. Whereas if you emailing your colleague or a fellow student or friend, it's less important to be that formal and you can just use their name. Natasha, what if you do not know the, the other person? Like you try to find information, you did a Google search, nothing. Like the email address is admin at sun, you don't know who's the, who's the recipient. What do you do then? Well, I always use to whom it may concern. It doesn't feel very personal, but it's the best way to approach this if you have no information on who you're emailing. I agree. So that is the second part of your email, the subject, and then the greetings. And then Natasha is going, to, oh, there's examples. So this is an example of an informal writing style. For example, when Natasha and myself are sending emails to one another, we will use hi. Uh, when we send the emails to Dr. Klaus, I'm, I'm Kosselman who is the director of the Golden Key International Society of the Southern African chapter, we will say dear, because she is superior to us. Or if I am um, sending an email to my line manager, line manager at university, I will use dear as well. So this is informal, and this is an example of a formal writing style. Natasha, why is this formal? Who is Eugene? So this is, this is our vice rector. So he's very high up in the university. So even though I email him quite often, I email him by mentioning dear and then use his full title and surname, not just his name. And JC, in the, chat, in the question and answer, we have some good things coming in. Sherry mentioned if um, 
she doesn't know who she's emailing. So for instance, say it's info, info at goldenkey.com or .org. She uses the term to the team at wherever it's from. And Eliana also mentioned dear sir or ma'am, which is also a good, slightly more personal option than to whom it may concern. Perfect. You can definitely include that as well. And this is also just to remind you that um, the ceremony is coming up in September. I hope everything is planned and people are invited. It's going to be a first for all um, using technology and we're not going to be able to be there in person, but it's also quite exciting as well. So yeah, let's go to the spot. And that is the body. Natasha, can you please explain the body to us? So the body of an email is the why you're sending the email, the whole reason for your email. And here it's important to provide as much detail as possible while sticking to one theme. You know, you don't want to mention the webinar today as well as the meeting tomorrow and a social in the near future when we're back to normal. Um, it should also often start with a compliment or pleasantry in the beginning, unless it's the sort of second or third email of the day. So something like, I hope you f this finds you well, especially in this time, it's a nice personal touch. What do you think, JC? I completely agree with you. Um, one part is what is really important to me is it should be short and it should be sweet. It should be specific and that's it. The, the recipient do not want to read a, a, a essay. Um, get to the point um, and please do not include personal information. Um, if it's a work-related email, rather send two emails. The first email is work-related. You can say, for example, your essay will be submitted on the 8th of August or you will hand in the report but do not mention the rapi or the bri or um, your social plans in that email even if you're friends with that individual keep it apart because you can always backtrack to your emails and then it's not very professional um, include information like dates and time um, as well so that no one is wondering when something is, for example, due. Good point, JC. Especially if I need a report or something from you for a specific deadline. It's yes. important to include that deadline so that you can put it in your to-do list. Because that will help you if you're planning as well. Both of, both of the, um, the recipient as well as you, you know what to work towards. Okay. So then we get to closing phrase, Natasha. Well, I guess this depends on your writing style. If it was a more informal email to a colleague or a friend, or whether it was to the Dean or your lecturer or Dr. Almi. So here are some suggestions, but you guys are welcome to give us some as well. There are a few here that I've never used like cordially. That seems very, very, Formal. My favorite is kind regards or regards. What's yours, Jason? Mine as well. I always end emails with kind regards. And when I'm not, not that kind that day, I will just say regards. Um, but mostly kind regards. What what do you use? If you can maybe use the chat function to to tell us which closing phrase are you using when you're sending an email. Hopefully you are using a closing phrase. I'm sure they are. I hope so. so. Gideon says he uses warm regards. Natasha uses kind regards. Caitlin uses kind regards. Ileana uses have a lovely day. I love that one. Um, there are quite a few with kind regards and regards. Some are less kind than others. Best regards. <laughs> kindest regards. Yours faithfully. I like the yours faithfully. I might move to that one. Lots of kind regards, regards. Thank you and kind regards. So just to say, say it again, the writing style is quite important. 
like please do not end your email with lots of love um and then your closing jc for example that is not appropriate for for professional email communication um stick to these words that will be best yes yeah, sherry had a good one now in the times that we find ourselves in she uses stay safe which i like i like that one as well stay safe i have my mask with me so i am always safe so <laughs> <laughs> i moved okay. today mine's there somewhere so now we're going to get to the last part of your email and that is the email signature now the email signature is for me the most important part but natasha i want to know from you why do you think an email signature is so important well it's a good way to market not only yourself or your institution if you're a student or a lecturer or the company or society that you're involved with. It's a way to not only provide your professional details, maybe backing up some of the stuff that was mentioned in the email, but also provide your contact details. I've given an example of mine, but you're welcome to suggest what you would have done differently. It's not a CV, it's just a signature. <laughs> <laughs> I will send you my CV and you can shorten it. <laughs> Does anyone have any other suggestions that would maybe need to go into the email signature? What do you guys do? And are you actually using a signature? Remember, if you're a student, even if you're a first year student, you can have a signature. You can say, for example, what you're, what you're studying. You can say what's your email address, your student number. Um, if you're not comfortable with yourself, with your cell phone number you don't have to add that but if you're part of a committee like if you're part of golden key even you can have golden key on your signature that's a big achievement to be proud of you're part of the 15 top percent students at your university and you can include your your, your university logo as as well because that's part of marketing you are part of the top part of South Africa. So please include a signature. If you do not know how to include a signature, we are unfortunately not going to spend time on that. However, please ask your um, Golden Key advisors for support at your institution to create a signature. For example, at Stellenbosch University, we have a, um, a template to do that. So if you're at Stellenbosch University, please make contact with Natasha or myself and we will provide guidance on that. If you're not at Stellenbosch University and you're at other university, we are more than welcome to assist with that as well. But it is quite important. Natasha, is there any questions in the chat box or not yes. at the moment? Yes, JC. So Princess said that she never thought that she could do this as a student, which I am always a strong believer in. I, as a scientist, people say, even at sort of PhD level, they say, no, I'm not a scientist yet. You will be, you are, you think that way. So if you're a science student, you're a scientist, put in there, BSc student. If you're doing teaching degree, BSc student, add your stuff. You are important. And as you mentioned, most of the people here are Golden Key members. That's a huge achievement. Put it there. And you can also, if um, we, we can maybe have a discussion on this another day, but to have a little Golden Key logo included in that signature as well. Um, I think that, that will be quite special for our Golden Key members. Um, we will pass that idea, um, or we will share that idea with Dr. Elmi. Um, she's listening, so she can't run away now. Um, but I think that will be quite nice for our members. So, yeah. So, JC, there is also um, a question, how do you create a signature? I don't think we'll be able to get into that right now. Um, but there's also one, how so, do you order your details? Your name, your title, and thereafter? Okay, so... Um, 
I will I will develop a short document on how to um, create a e signature in your email address and I will provide that to Golden Key. Uh, I, I will do that. I will take that one on me as well. Um, and then we can share that information with the members how to, to insert a signature. It's really quick, really fast. Um, I'm going to give you a tip. Email your lecturer at your institution and when she emails you back, you copy and paste the signature and you use that information in your signature because that's possible. You can copy and paste someone else's signature and insert it in your signature. However, what is also quite nice is there's social media links at the bottom. So I don't know if that will be working then, but if you can see a Natasha signature, I'm going to show you there. Um, there's Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and is it LinkedIn? And YouTube, is it YouTube, Natasha? And Natasha has gone again. So that's, that's definitely one way to do. Um, yeah. With regards to the order of your information, um, you can actually take a photo of Natasha's information um, and use it as it is, or just fill in your information. But your your name and your surname is always first. Um, no doubt about that. Um, and then you can have to slash with what you're studying um, and you can be specific there and then under it the department where you are studying at the moment. So you can, for, you can have, for example, BA Humanities and then have in your the next line um, Social Arts, for example. And you can also include their information that you're part of um, the Golden Key International Society. You can maybe include if you're in a residence and you're part of a committee, like it is a little short CV to create an, 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 an reputation for yourself. Normally, if you're sending emails to a big company, um, if you do not have a signature, they're not going to even read your email. Um, that's also to make sure that you are a liable um, source. So please include your signature and we will assist with that. Thank you, Natasha. Can we continue? JC, we have another one, which is quite important. If you have an email signature, do you still have a closing phrase in your email or is the email signature enough? No, you, you can have a, a closing phrase as well, but what you can do is you can have your closing phrase included in your signature. So you can have in your signature kind regards and then the rest of your information. If you're not that kind that day, you can easily remove or delete the kind. It's not an image. It's just you insert the information. Um, yeah, you insert the information and that's it. Am I right. that a question? Okay, so please, after the session, I want all of you to have an email signature. Um, you have to brand yourself. You need to sell yourself. You need to make a good impression when sending that email. Okay, so this is my part. So now we actually addressed all of these information. We have a subject line, we have a greeting, you have a, a compliment, you have the reason for the email, um, you have a closing message and a signature. But if you think about it, the structure of the email is very similar to the structure of an academic essay. You have the introduction, you have the body, and you have the conclusion. So there's three parts. Um, to make it easy to remember, and I know you all do that because I've asked Natasha if she, she does it as well, and she said yes. So I'm assuming everyone is doing that. If you're in your house before COVID, before lockdown, and you went to town or you went to a friend's house, um, you always look in the mirror before you leave the house, correct? And you will check. We have your hair, your makeup, your clothes, and your shoes. So there's three parts. Hair, body, your clothing, and your shoes. And you should do this exactly the same when you're sending an email. You should check, do I have my hair done? 
do I have a my clothing and do I have my shoes? Do I have a, a subject line and a greeting? Do I have the body, the action, and do I end off the email well? So that's just a good way to to resemble to remember that. Natasha, maybe you want to say something about the email signature? Yeah, so for those of you that are interested, um, this is the link to the Stellenbosch University um, sort of template. Obviously, this is specifically for Stellenbosch, but I'm sure you can, um, if you're from another chapter or another university, you're welcome to edit it, maybe use your university colors rather than the Stellenbosch colors. I think it will be difficult for other universities to use this template um, because you need to log in with your username and password. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's why we, we will, we will um, develop something, Natasha, and share yeah. it with everyone to do yeah. that. And then maybe we can pass it by Dr. Elmi and send it to all Golden Key members and they can just insert it or adapt it a bit. Okay. Yes, she's already mentioned she loves the idea. Perfect. Um, yeah, the correct way to do that. Okay. Natasha, do you want to add some, anything about the structure? No, we have a few questions. I don't know if you want to try them now or a bit later. Let me hear them. Cool. So the first one we have is, how about when you've entered into a conversation with someone and they signed their email with their last name? Do you keep calling them by prof or doctor or do you switch to what they call themselves at the end? I think that's a fantastic one. Um, I think, I think in every situation it's unique. Um, but if the person is referring to their surname or not their title, I will continue using the title and the surname until the individual I like intentionally informs me, please, you can call me JC. Um, continue with that. That's just being respectful. Um, after a while, especially if you're emailing the individual a lot, they will say, okay, um, please call me JC. Like normally in the beginning of the year, the students will address me as Mr. Rodemeyer. And then later on, I will say, oh, do you know what? I'm JC. Please, in your emails, you can just say, dear JC. And, and, and I'm happy with that. I'm glad to hear you say that. I forget to tell people that. And I prefer be call, being called Natasha. So I'll definitely do that from now on. I was also in a conversation this weekend with one of my friends. And her name is Jessica. And she normally signs off her email as Jess. And she prefers that the other person actually address her as Jess. So if, if she's setting that tone in a very, and if it's an informal email or not that formal, um, then you can use the, the, the name that the other individual is signing off. But if it's an a individual in a higher capacity, I'm so sorry, it sounds so bad to say a higher capacity, but unfortunately it is what it is. Um, please, use professional writing or formal writing. Okay. And then Jason, so, we have another good one. So if you're writing an yes. email to the university professor, is it preferable to use your student email or your personal one? That is a good question. And the answer is use your student email. The reason why is we have access to all of your information with your student number on the university system. So we can easily determine who you are, where you come from, what do you study, um, and all of that by, by doing a quick lookup. So it's, it's, it's perfect for us if you include your student number. We do not um, send emails or information to your Gmail account, for example, and we can't use that information at all. So. For example, when, when I am a lecturer and I've sent emails, I always send it to the student email addresses as well. And then I know it's also a reliable um, email address. That, yeah. Any other questions, Natasha? Yes. Then we have another one. What is the best font and font color when writing an email? 
So that was actually, that's going to be part of our tips, but we can quickly address that as well. Please do not use green or purple or yellow. You can use the dark blue or the black and you use normally the font that we'll use in the essay. So that will be Arial or um, New Times Roman. Um, and also, what's the other one, Natasha? Um, Libri is my favorite. You can use that as well. That is the university's font. They are using that in all of their email communication. Um, I like to use Arial. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't like um, New Times Roman that much. I don't know why. I like round letters, so it's Agreed. just a personal, a personal choice. Um, but please do not use that Joker fund or um, a, a writing style that will be difficult to determine um, what are you actually trying to say. Okay. Great. Any other, any other questions from our chat opt function? Uh, there are a few that we can address just now. Okay, perfect. So here is an example of an email um, and I believe that there might be some challenges or issues or problems in this email. So I want you to quickly think for a few seconds, how can you improve this email? Just think about it first. How can you improve this email? JC, you should have checked us, checked your hair, clothes, and shoes. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On this um, one. Definitely. That's a good way to start this discussion is to check your hair, clothes, and then the shoes. So we want you to comment in the chat function, how can you improve this email? And before Natasha is going to inform me or us about the improvements, we want everyone to engage. So how can you improve this email? Use the chat function and then Natasha will inform us. So there's some spelling errors according to Caitlin and poor grammar. Um, don't start with also, have an appropriate ending, address the person at least with their name in capital letter. <laughs> Someone said this email is a war crime. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> the subject is too vague. Just edit the email. Don't use emojis. There's no email signature. Subject again, not informative. And spacing issues. So just general editing and keep it one subject per email. And I think that's important, JC. Someone mentioned if one needs to discuss multiple things, can you just use different paragraphs? It seems inefficient to send multiple emails to the same person. If the theme is the same, if it's work related, yes. But if the theme is not the same, I would rather send two emails. For example, if you're addressing the work environment, meetings, reports, then it's fine. But you're not going to have meetings, reports, and then the Rugby World Cup social um, in that same email. Then two emails is, you should use two emails. But if I, if I say theme-related, work-related stuff is one theme. And then you can have two paragraphs. And then, JC, someone mentioned, um, I use Arial for writing the email, and my email signature is another funky font. I think it's Joker. Is that fine, or should I change it? It also used to be green, but I changed it to blue. The green was too bright. Do you have so anything to say on that? So it depends on who are you emailing and also what is your profession. If you're a art student and you're emailing a funky company, you can be a bit more creative.
But if you're in this professional environment, like you're a teacher and you're emailing the principal, I would suggest not to use the Joker Fund. Um, but if you're an artist and you may want to actually create a bit of an impression or you want to be memorable, I would, I would accept that. But if, if you're a student and you're emailing your lecturer, in your case, for example, I would try to avoid that. JC, someone mentioned um, their supervisor prefers separate emails because the threads are easier for him to follow and search for, which is a really good point. That is a very good point. And also to include that, that's why the unique identifier in a subject line with the specific information is important to easily find those threads of emails. Um, that's a very good observation or remark. Who was that? Who said that? That was Ileana. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so I think we actually addressed most of the errors. Um, one thing that I want to just to highlight is on the screen you see hi Jackie with a comma. So that comma after hi Jackie is actually not necessary. You can take that out. And punctuation is also important. For example, thanks with four exclamation marks. Like you don't have to scream at, at me. I can read. Um, one is enough. Don't ever use more than one exclamation mark, please. Okay. So we would like to show you just an example of how we can transform this email to something more professional. And something that we want to include as well is that you are more than welcome to have a numbering or a bullet point system as well, as long as it's clear and concise and you, you know what to expect in that email. So this is an example of um, a more professional email. So I know what is the email about. Obviously, this is a work-related email, so the individual know what is the recipient, know who you are. So you don't have to include a, um, a unique identifier. Um, maybe it's a small company because, as you can see, I, I, I was, uh, yeah, I was a cell manager manager in this email apparently. Um, yeah. Any questions from your side? Natasha, if you can check the chat function for more questions. Um, there's only one left. If the email develops into a back and forth conversation, do I keep closing off, closing off my responses with a closing remark and with my email signature? So I know I, my email signature is automatically, it, it, as soon as I write an email, it's there. So I always use it. But what do you use, JC? It depends on the relationship with the recipient. Um, if you're used to sending emails every day back and forth, you, you don't have to include your signature every single time. Um, the person knows you. Like the signature will not add value to your email. Um, the person knows in which department are you working. The person knows what yourself or your, your telephone number, your email address and all of that information. Um, then it's becoming more of an informal writing style and you do not have to include the signature. It's not adding value. It's just making it lengthy. That's my, my point of view. Okay. Someone had a good point. Natasha, other Natasha had a good point. When setting up your signature, you can create two signatures, one for responses and one for new mails. Oh my God. Yes, that's a very great, great observation. Can you maybe um, identify one mistake? It's just one mistake, and that is the, the JC Rodemeyer, JC Rodemeyer. You do not have to use your name twice. So that was actually a mistake from my side. I did not check my shoes. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, let's continue. So, Natasha, if you can maybe run us through some general tips. Yeah, so we've been through most of it. 
the ones that we haven't really touched on are things like avoiding slang and jargon. Um, always make sure to check your tone, proofread everything. Always remember that attachment. Luckily, Microsoft generally reminds you, which I need a lot. Um, and then in, some, in a setting like ours, we work with patients and it's clinical information. Just be extra careful with confidential information. What about you, JC? Do you have any cool tips? Yes. So you, it, it's possible for you to, to include Grammarly, a free version in your emails. So please try and include Grammarly because that will pick up on all the mistakes. That's a very useful tip. And not a lot of people actually know about, knows about that tip. So as, because I am a, a language lecturer or I, I focus on academic literacy, um, proofreading your email is quite important. Um, it automatically set a tone of, are you capable of writing a formal email? It's creating a good impression. If there's no spelling mistake or punctuation errors and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's the proofread part is quite important for me. So we are going to get to, is there any questions? Any no, last nothing. questions? No, nothing. So we are actually going to do the last quiz. Um, so if you can quickly get, grab yourself and again, you know the drill by now. And this Mentimeter, the question is about email etiquette. So everything or some questions that is based on the information that was presented in this webinar. And it's a competition again, because we love a good competition. And then, Natasha will, yeah. and then Natasha will quickly um, give us some, some information about that prize. Yes, so the winner of this Mentimeter quiz will be winning a take-a-lot voucher courtesy of Golden Key Southern Africa. So make sure you fit fastest fingers first. Do, so, what, am, I, am I allowed to participate as well? No, JC. You're not, you know, you set up the <laughs> question, you know all the answers. I, you know, I don't think I should participate because I'm going to feel terrible if I'm not going to win, but, and I set up the question, so um, that won't, won't work that good. So, yeah. So go so to twenty meters so long the the um yeah I'm just quickly going to the twenty meter slide. Natasha, is everyone there and ready? We're going to do the cooler now. Questions yeah. on the so, code, I'm just typing it in the chat. Quickly. A lot of people. Yes. Was open there? Can you see it on the screen? Natasha, can you see the quiz on the screen? No, JC. Okay, I am fixing it. Can you see it now? It said that, yes, now we can see it. Thank you, JC. Perfect. My apologies. 
Okay, so we have 66 people participating in this um, competition. Um, and we're going to determine who knows their email etiquette the best. So if everyone is ready, um, we're going to continue now to the quiz. I'm quite excited that there's a lot of participants. Um, so here we go, I think we're ready. Remember, fastest fingers first. Why do you need email etiquette? Time is up, and the correct answer is D or professionalism. It should be effective and then it should be protected from liabilities. So the answer, only 28 of you got it, the answer correct. And now we're going to see who was the fastest finger. So it looks like Isabella is in the winning position with Caitlin Sneiman just behind her and then Lauren, Rabbit and Robin. So it's looking good. Um, remember, if you're a winner at the end of the session, just please send us your details so that we can make contact with you. So, are you ready for the second question? I can't hear you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> second question. What is the best subject like for a professional email? Hos Almi. I like it. <laughs> I'm Perfect. sure Dr. Almi will love that one. Yes. So the answer to this question is it's very specific information, this unique identifier, and I know what's the email about. So let's determine who is in the winning position. Is it going to change? Is it not going to change? Oh, it's, it's changing. Oh, it changed. So Caitlin Sneiman is in our first position. Lauren in our second position. Um, and Isabella in the third position. Adanda fourth. And Leah fifth. I wonder where you're from. If you, if afterwards, you can maybe post where you're from. That will be quite interesting to see. Are you ready for the next question? Here we go. Natasha, before we get to the next question, how much is that take lot voucher? Do we know? I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to ask the other Natasha. We know, She'll okay. Know. She will Otherwise, know. Dr. Almi will. I'm just curious. Maybe Dr. Almi can post a message in the chat function to, to say how much it's worth. But before we get there, let's go to the next question. Almi says 500 rand. What? Damn, okay. like, what's the fate? <laughs> Which is the best email greeting? Hello, Smitty. I think email is the key word here. I am so proud. Dear Mrs. Smith. <laughs> and the majority of you got this a question right, but it all depends on who's got the fastest finger. Is it changing? Do you think it's going to change? Pierre says horse Almi is always the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Dr. Almi will agree with that. <laughs> Caitlin Sneiman is still in the leading position. Lauren second. Adanda third, Leah, and then Isabella. I and I'm assuming it's all females. I think it's because it's women's month this this month. That's why. Go women empowerment. 
So the next question. How to end? That should be an email. My apologies. I like the adios amigos. I'm going <laughs> to use that one for my friends. <laughs> I think these two people are just trying to mess with our results. I hope so. I think it might be Natasha. I know her. Natasha's are. No, I don't know Natasha. Yeah, I think that she's doing it on purpose. Let's look at the leadership boards. Do you think there's going to be a change? Ooh. Oui. Huh. Almost. This is going to be close. And this is the last question. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. This is the last question. Yes, all of the above, your name, your company's name, or your institution's name, as well as a contact number, for example, a cell phone or your work number. So now we're going to see who scored the highest marks. And there we have a winner. The winner of this competition or from the presentation is Caitlin Sneiman. Caitlin, if you can maybe just give us a, a message in the chat function. We would like to know where you're from um, and also just provide us with your contact details as well so that Natasha can connect with you. So, yeah, that is... Well done, all. Caitlin. Well done, Caitlin. Um, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, the, 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 that was our presentation. Natasha, over to you. Thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed that and you found it informative. If you have any last questions, you're welcome to um, pop them in the question and answer section. JC, you have someone mentioned that all your open tabs make them anxious and I agree 100%. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are there any final questions from you guys? No questions. No questions. They're all saying it's informative and enjoyable. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Yo, you're more than welcome to post more feedback. That will be appreciated um, so that we can grow and learn from this experiences as well. It's also something new to us. Um, to, to create a space where it's a safe environment where learning can take place. So feedback is, will be appreciated. So there's one question. There's just, um, do you need to reply with thank you on a general email? And that, what do you think, JC? Um, you don't have to reply with thank you, but you can say something like, um, I've received your email. Um, what I normally do, but it irritates people is uh, I have a read reply function on my emails, but I know people um, does not like that. But then I know yeah, you received the email um, and I get a notification when you read the email as well. Um, but I am a bit of an admin freak, so it's just to, to help me with my planning. But you can merely reply, um, I've received the email, and that's it. So that the other person, know, the recipient, know you got it. We received the email. 
And there was someone that also mentioned as a last, quite a tricky question. How do you address reply all and blind CC? So that is a very difficult issue because if you're going to reply to all, you're part of the problem. So <laughs> you, you have to unfortunately wait it out because if someone else is replying to that reply to all, it's just making the situation worse. Um, so I would maybe send an email personally to that individual to say, um, you have used reply to all function. I would appreciate it if you are more concerning or if you did take everyone in consideration the next time. Because remember, we are in a position where we should educate people and not belittle them. And it could have been an honest mistake. And before we react to situations like that, we just need to be mindful of their situation as well. Because it can happen. It's, a, it's an honest mistake. And I know in, in the times that we are, are learning new information via Zoom, the new reply to all is when an individual is not muted, um, is, is mic. Because that can also be quite disturbing. Um, but we need to we need to just think about the situ situation or scenario as well. Natasha, what, what what's your answer? I don't think there's a correct answer. What is your perspective? Yeah, I think it depends on the context of the email for sure. If it's an informative email going out to hundreds of people, and you and you have you personally have to respond. If you reply to all, it might be a bit much, and you filling up everyone's email inbox but if you, everyone has to be kept in the loop then it's important to you okay and that is it any more questions nope we're all good okay perfect anything from golden key southern africa side dr elmi Thanks everyone for attending. I just want to say to Natasha and JC, thank you for this very informative webinar. I'm sure all of the attendees have left with something really valuable. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks Natasha. Yes, thank you very much. And I think this is a stimulation for more of these kind of sessions. I already saw one on ethics. Somebody wants to know more about ethics. Um, and that is something that uh, we will make a note of and make sure that we can do another webinar on those. And yes, whatever people have a need for, please just mail us at southafrica at goldenkey.org so that we can understand what kind of webinars you actually want to know more about. Great. Thanks, Almi. Thank you and good night, everybody. Night, everyone. Keep safe. Right. I think everyone can now switch on their, their um, or just show their hands and wave at least goodbye <laughs> as they leave. Lots of people saying thank you and goodbye. Kind regards. <laughs> <laughs> no regards. <laughs>